Hi, good morning. Um, it's really exciting to be here. I'm very happy to be here, so let me thank you, Open Wallet and Linux Foundation, to be, for inviting me to talk today. And also, I'm also happy and excited because the open source community is where I come from, but I moved completely doing other things. And today, I will, it's the opportunity to talk how this to word, the work I do in the commission about policy has gone uh, match what uh, open source can do for, uh, for policy, specifically for, for society, in this, in this case for the ODI wallet. Um, so the European Commission and the member state, I mean, the whole, the whole community sets very important targets for 2030 uh, for transform the society in a digital society. And this, this very ambitious target are about infrastructure, building inf digital infrastructure, about um, making key public services 100% online for all the citizens and the businesses, and also digitalize the companies of all sides. So by 2030, we are going to, we aim to be there in a completely different society that is digital and is enabling everyone and say everyone to participate to this society. And in order to do that, we, we, we have to build a digital public infrastructure. What are the digital public infrastructure? Digital public infrastructure are a um, foundation of um, services, components that are enabling the whole society to uh, be uh, um, act in a digital space. And this is about mainly three main components that have been identified. Uh, so, identify people, so enabling secure identification, authentication for individuals and businesses, uh, a data exchange mechanism, and the payments. So, these three components are basically uh, the foundation and to create a unified European stack where um, a, that can, will help to be inclusive, secure, and seamless to develop the technology around this concept and uh, make them. Uh, um, create the enough uh, economic growth and social inclusion. Um, so, and how this, what is, how this is going to be done in, 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 in Europe? So, the response to this is coming from the amendment of the regulation, the old regulation is EIDA, so the identity, uh, Trust Services and the, uh, Identity, uh, uh, the Digital Identity. And, um, and it's called European Digital Identity Framework, where inside we do have European Digital Identity Wallet. And what is the wallet? The wallet is, as I said, it's a framework. So it's not going to be one specific wallet. We will see later on. It's a set of rules, legally and technical, legal and technical, that are, uh, are going to provide uh, security uh, secure identification, legal identification for all the, uh, for all, uh, uh, the citizens and, and, and the businesses, and the, the functionality to store, collect, store, and present uh, data in a format that is called attestation of attributes, is qualified data, and also to sign digital documents and, and uh, any kind of artifact that is digital. Um, this will be made available to all, for all the member states, for all the citizens. It's a voluntary, it's not mandatory. So all this uh, kind of uh, aspect are covered in the, in the legislation that is called digital identity uh, framework. And so how the wall is going to fit into the digital public infrastructure that I explained before is exactly providing the building blocks for creating any kind of service. And that's why we it, we call that digital public infrastructure. So it's providing identification authentication mechanism uh, with a legal value, but also uh, making quite a, a lot of attention to privacy and security in order to uh, enable in the right way uh, also uh, the, this legal identification, but not necessary uh, to share all the data or to share all the information, giving the user control of their data. Then there is an exchanging uh, data mechanism, a way to exchange data, uh, qualified data issued by different actors, government actors, or public sector actors, or private sector 
uh, entity DAR can do that. And also it's going to create the environment to develop a payment system. So we can attach to the wallet uh, payment uh, uh, um, uh, mechanism and transform that. But, uh, why is relevant this for open source? Because it, the regulation says that this has to happen uh, in an open, uh, so all the software that was going to be, all the wallets are going to be open source. Not only the software that the member state will provide or a private actor will provide, but also uh, the specification how these uh, this, uh, wallets are going to build. So how this foundation, these building blocks are going to build. In fact, there will not be one wallet, there will be many wallets. Uh, we hope not so many because obviously fragmentation is also a big problem, but uh, in enough wallet to guarantee uh, all the requirements uh, we just we just seen to enable the whole society to uh, be uh, act in digital space. Uh, the open technical specification uh, is what we are the commission is working on together with member state, together experts from the civil society, together with industry, and this is done in very similar way that we uh, normally we used to develop software. So it's on GitHub, there is a document that's going to be developed and where we are trying to understand how these wallets will work, and how, what standard we are going to use, for example, for the different parts of the wallet. And they are all available and everyone can comment. Obviously, uh, the way to decide how to do that is not what we call normally open development, it is, it's still a, proj op, a governmental project, so there are member states that have specific responsibility establishing the regulation, but this is happening in a very uh, open source way, I would say. And at the same time, the commission is providing a reference implementation, so uh, all the components that should be developed following those specification and making them available to all the member states, or to all, uh, to everyone in order to build your own wallet. This is a reference implementation. It's not mandatory to use it, but it's there to prove that what we are writing in the specs can be implemented. And again, this is uh, open source. There, there is not just the app where we are providing a modular approach. You will find libraries, um, anything that is needed to build, uh, to, to build this ecosystem, because it's not just an app is much more than that. There is an entire ecosystem around that. Um, so then all this is going to be uh, tested in, in what we call pilot, large-scale pilots project. So uh, 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 right now there are four of this uh, large-scale pilot po uh, project. They are testing the reference implementation and uh, the specification in different way, trying different kind, uh, different. Uh, use cases, and you can see them here. There are who is focused more on payments or a mobile driver license, trying to understand how the, society, the different use cases in the society will be implemented with, with the wallet. And we have four now there is uh, EWC, DC4EU, Potential, and Nobit. They are doing a great job to test how this is going to, they are made of different member states, different private. Uh, entity that are participating to this piloting. There is a new call that's uh, been recently launched, uh, so it's still possible to participate in this piloting uh, with different topic. We, are, we have a new call that is going to be more focused on specific uh, use case, payments, travel, and other. So to, to create this whole ecosystem, to make this possible, we envision uh, the fact that we need to join forces. This is a very complex challenge, and it's a very complex, uh, there are very complex systems for many different aspects, policy, technology, privacy, uh, security. So um, we would like to highlight the fact that uh, this would be much easier, would be possible if we join forces between public and private, uh, to, to, to accelerate the implementation and facilitate the, uh, a resilient European stack on DPI, because this is what we are building. And this means that we are encouraging private and public sector to work together in a public-private partnership or any form to really um, yeah, break, <laughs> break all the, uh, the, the, the rules in terms of uh, working together instead of creating uh, silos and fragmentation there, because, I mean, it's, it's really a complicated uh, um, 
aspect. So the wallets are going to be more than, as I said, a piece of technology. There, is, um, there are a lot of critical uh, public infrastructure that needs to be built on top of this. There are a lot of services that can be built on top of the wallet. And, and there is a lot of opportunity for developers, for, for, for companies to um, engage with this, trying to understand how all these aspects will be integrated in the existing uh, uh, software, in the, in the browser, and in, in the existing uh, services. So we really believe this is opening uh, it's, it's opening a, a, a lot of new opportunities for uh, the public sector to improve the way they provide services to the citizen, and at the same time to, to companies and, and, and developers to uh, change the way our data is uh, today collected, managed, and, and uh, um, used in, 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 uh, uh, in different contexts, as I said. So for personal use, but also in, in the context of the, uh, of the businesses. So an open source and open specification, as I said, are key uh, factors for, for the success of the wallet. We really believe, and I think it is one of the few project where the commission is really trying to develop policy, to develop software, to test them all together and make this available in the public. So it's, it's not, an, so it's quite an innovative as approach, I would say, in the context of the governments, of 27 governments of the commission. And we do really strongly believe that this is going to be successful if we start playing all together and try to achieve this. Um, yeah, so the wallet will be also critical for the future of the single market because what, we, what it, the wallet is trying to create is a level playing field for everybody where they will be the same, the wallet will be the same everywhere, okay? So they will be the same in all the different member states because we, we, we are regulating that and there will be a certification uh, that will, it needs, to, it needs to be done against the, 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 the the wallet, and they have to prove they are respecting all the requirements, not only security requirement, but all the fun functional uh, requirement. And this is, is uh, a game changer, especially in the context of the digital identity, because until now, the current system is a federated system where each system works in its own way, and uh, it, there are a lot of snowflakes, as you might uh, be developers, you know how, how snowflakes are problem when you need to manage large scale systems. And, and so the approach of, 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 of this new regulation is really to try to harmonize across Europe and create a level playing field where uh, uh, a lot of application can be done on top of this stack we are trying to build. So, and we do have example around the world how this has been beneficial to improve society and, and, and reduce, inc improve inclusion. And I'm thinking to India, where a digital uh, um, public infrastructure have been uh, defined, I would say, during the G20. And uh, we there, we have seen how, for example, for payments with their system, UPI or ADAR, the identity, uh, they have been able to reach a very large part of their population. We are talking about 700 million of people that today are accessing uh, uh, digital services and, and performing payments in a completely new way. So, there, and also Brazil is quite interesting from this point of view. So, digital public infrastructure, this approach is a lot, uh, enabling what can be done, what is a leapfrog for the society to move from a situation where it's not necessarily digital, but it is, uh, can reach those goals, those objectives we have, we have defined it for uh, 2030. And this is gonna be my last slide. We have a website uh, you can find in the QR code, uh, it's easy to find out where you can find how we are designing all this. And, and uh, you will find the, uh, the link for the specification for the software already available. And so the message here is really, please uh, have a look and, and, and try to uh, contribute to this because we believe there, are, and, uh, there will be a lot of opportunity. And Open Wallet Foundation this is also trying to organize this. I believe it's, it's doing a great job. I uh, don't see Daniel, but uh, this is a great opportunity to uh, uh, work there in this context. 
Thanks.